This video is intended to introduce the new features available in Image Sleuth version 1.3. If you are not already familiar with Image Sleuth, you might like to first view the introductory video. The link is in the description below. So let's get started by opening the Image Sleuth application. For anyone already familiar with Image Sleuth, the first thing one will notice are the three tabs which were not in the previous version. Retro Reveal Clone, RGB, Red, Green, Blue Color Filter, Color Erase and Replace. Prior to version 1.3, Image Sleuth only included a Retro Reveal replacement, but now also includes two additional two tools, each on its own tab. To illustrate how these may be used, I'm going to open up a document, in this case an envelope with writing on it. Because the image is larger than the maximum size set in the configuration, a warning dialog pops open. Note, the selected image size is 1350 by 760 pixels. As this exceeds the maximum size specified in the configuration, the image will be scaled to 1000 by 562 pixels. One has the option of turning off this warning dialog in the future by unchecking this checkbox. Or one can change the maximum image size via the configuration, as will be shown later in this video. This screen will be familiar to anyone who has used Image Sleuth before. A thumbnail of the original image at the top left and a collection of color space thumbnails that have been processed using the same algorithms that were used by Retro Reveal prior to its disappearance, each entitled with a label to indicate the algorithm used. The text in the original image is not very clear. Let's see if we can find an approved image. Image 7 looks promising. Click on it for a better view. Open, this opens up a new window with a full size image. We can also scroll through the images to find something better. 8 is much of a muchness, 9 is actually a little worse. I think that 10 looks better. Note the transformation number and label in the title bar. Color space 10, Y, X, Y, Y. By fiddling with the brightness and, color and contrast controls, the image can be improve, improved even further and to make it much more legible. I think that's much better. We can copy the image to the clipboard for pasting it to another program or it can be saved as a new image. The next tool I want to look at is the Color Erase and Replace tool. To illustrate this, I'm going to examine a Palestine Mandate stamp issued between 1920 and 1922. These stamps were overprinted in three languages, Hebrew, English and Aramaic, uh, Arabic, in at least six different formats which are often very hard to differentiate between. 
The overprints can be very hard to discern, especially on stamps printed in dark colours. Clicking on the Colour Erase and Replace tab shows the stamp full displayed full size. Moving one's mouse over the image, a magnifying swatch showing the area under the cursor follows the cursor. This is the eraser. Currently the small eraser is selected. Selecting a larger eraser will display a larger magnified swatch. Whatever colors are displayed in the swatch will be raised using a weighted algorithm when the mouse button is clicked. Here some of the cream background and the dark back brownish foreground are displayed in the swatch. Clicking the mouse will erase these colors, replacing them with white. Clicking on undo will reverse the last operation. The current erase color is white. However, one can choose a different erase color by clicking on the black button or from a color selection dialog box or by choosing a color in the image using the color pick tool. Notice how the cursor has changed to a dropper followed by a little swatch with a solid colour. I am choosing part of the creamy background. The current erase colour is changed to match. I am going to select the medium sized eraser and I am going to erase the dark brownish colour. Please note Whatever is displayed in the magnified swatch is what is used to select the colors to erase. Don't rely too much on the cursor, this is just a guide. Here the swatch only contains the darkish brown color, so that is all that will be erased. Moving the cursor around, watching the swatch, I can raise more of the background. I just make, need to make sure not to include any black in the swatch because that is what we want to keep. Oops, but I can do that by pressing the undo button or the Control z key combination. At this point I'm going to try and enhance the black overprint by erasing it with black. Select black and then choosing the tiny eraser. I can erase the black with black to enhance it. Oops, again, but I can do that. Yeah, I'm erasing, you know, erasing black with black. Undo. Notice how much sharper the black is now. I'm now going to clean up the background some more. The background color again. It is now selected. Actually, I think a lighter shade will be better. By choosing a color from the color selection dialog box, notice how the chosen background color is pre selected, and I can use the slider here to choose a lighter shade. Okay. This is now a selected raised colour. 
I can then use that to raise more of the background. Making sure not to select any of the black. However, if we do, it can easily be undone. The overprint is now easily discernible. And we can now even make out part of a parcel postmark that was barely noticeable before. Rotating it makes the word parcel easier to read. P A R C E and part of an L. I'm now going to open the image of an envelope again in order to illustrate an enhancement that was actually introduced with Image Sleuth version 1.2. I can open from the list of recently used files. And once again the warning dialog pops open. Note the selected image size is 1350 by 760 pixels. As this exceeds the maximum size specified in the configuration, the image will be scaled to 1000 by 562 pixels. Image Sleuth generates a large number of images. The larger the image is, the longer it will take to process it and generate the images. As a compromise to prevent excessive processing time, Image Sleuth can automatically scale larger images down. This can be controlled via the configuration dialog box, which is accessible via the configuration configure button on the toolbar. This includes an option to configure the image size by setting the maximum width and maximum height. For example, 1000 by 1000. Images that are large in this can automatically automatically be scaled to fit within these dimensions while keeping the aspect ratio by checking the scale image to fit maximum width and height checkbox. The configuration dialog box also allows one to adjust the size of the thumbnails shown in the retro reveal and RGB red green blue filter tabs. And it also allows one to disable the color space labels. Let's change to 200 and disable the color space labels. Notice the smaller thumbnails and also that the labels have been removed. I prefer larger thumbnails and color space labels. I'm going to restore them. Cut figure. Show color space labels. Back to 360. Okay, the, the thumbnail sizes are restored and the labels are back again. Finally, I am going to illustrate how to use the RGB color filter tool. I have left it to last as it will likely be, in many instances, be less useful than the other tools. To demonstrate this tool, I'm going to choose another image. Although the Retro Reveal tool already does a good job of displaying a crisp postmark, The intention is to illustrate the use of the RGB color filter tool. We scroll down past thumbnail 66, 32, 38, 66. 67 is labeled RGB colon R for red, 8 100%. This show, thumbnail shows that the red, color, uh, the red color channel with red values that are greater than 8% of 100% red. Similarly, thumbnail 71 
RGB green 20 to 60 percent shows the green color channel with green values of between 20 and 60 percent of 100 percent green. The RGB color filter, the RGB red, green, blue color filter tool does exactly the same, but rather than offering offering a few preset ranges, it allows one to select any value between zero and 100 percent. Here we have thumbnails representing the original image, a thumbnail containing all three color channels, red, green and blue, and an inverse, and an inverse of, the pre, of the previous thumbnail colors. First is signified by the tool to the front of the RGB. Along with separate thumbnails for each color channel and its inverse, for example red, and red invoice, significant, signified by the tool to R. Similarly for the green and blue channels. The three color sliders allow one to set the range for each channel. So for example I've set the green slider to 20% minimum and 60% maximum Oops, 20. And this is the green now the green channel thumbnail. It should be identical to the way that displayed by the Retro Reveal tour tool, channel 71. Red, green, blue, 20 to 60%. This is identical image. One also has the option using white instead of black to replace the filtered out colors. Like in the Retro Reveal view, one can also click on a thumbnail to display the image full size, allowing one to also adjust the contrast, brightness, etc. That concludes this demonstration. I hope that you found Image Sleuth useful, and thank you for watching.